Well, it's certainly been a couple of days since I've seen one of these, a modular component system. This was the house brand by JCPenney. And yes, I was factory authorized to work on these things when they were brand spanking new. They weren't bad receivers. A lot of them made by Panasonic, some made by NEC. They had a couple little drop-in manufacturers. I know most of their VCRs were made by Panasonic or Hitachi. And they were pretty decent machines. Had a couple functions you couldn't get on the name brand units, but you could get them in the JCPenney line. Was not a modular component system at that point, but nevertheless, let's take a look at the back of it. And I'm gonna say this thing's been around the block a time or two. Just take a look at the serial number on that thing. Kind of hard to even make out the date. Is there something on there? I'm not sure, but antenna inputs, phono auxiliary, tape one, tape two, no CD input. So that kind of dates it pre-CD. Does have the switched and unswitched AC outlets, which is very nice if you're setting up a system. Well, let's get the top off and do a visual inside. Have not even powered this thing up yet. Okay, and once again, not quite sure what kind of science experiment is going on in here. Looks like it's definitely had moisture in it in the past. Mold maybe, corrosion on the plastic of all things. But maybe leaky capacitors down here. Definitely some rust on the tuning capacitor. And it does look like someone at some time or another may have tried to replace these incandescent lights with something else that just, it didn't clear? Because they're kind of, I'm not sure, they just maybe bent them over? Maybe that's how they operate? Not 100% sure. Anyhow, it looks like NEC manufacturing. Fairly high quality. Big beefy power transformer. Individual discrete NEC output transistors down here. Definitely had problems with those in the past, however. So we'll see how this goes. But let's go ahead and hook speakers up and power it up and see what's gonna happen. Okay, AC power is applied. Speakers are connected. Turn this thing on. Ooh, green LEDs, look at that. And I heard a speaker relay click. So do we get any sound at all? And yes, we do. But only out of one channel. That's the right channel. That's the left channel, I'm on AM. Speaker switch contacts? No. We'll move the switches. And I get nothing on the right channel, but I do get AM on the left channel. There's also someone who decided to walk away from And it's working own. just fine. Uh, do we get FM? Let's go to mono, FM mute off. And I need to add an antenna, which will be my finger. And yes, FM works. We're getting audio, but once again, only out of one channel. So let's go ahead and see if we get audio out of the tape monitor jack, and that's going to tell us, tell us if it's going to be a preamp or a power amp problem. So I have the voltmeter connected in AC millivolts right now, and if I turn it to the, the left channel, I get audio no problem. If I turn it to the right channel, turn the volume up, I get nothing. But watch, hap watch what happens as I increase the volume. You can actually see the audio in millivolts going into the power amplifier. So I did connect speakers via another amplifier to the tape monitor output. Both channels working absolutely perfectly. So we got something going on in the power amplifier for the right channel only. The left channel seems to be working just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple more measurements and see if I can come up with something on this. Unfortunately on this one, I do not have a schematic and I cannot find one. It's kind of an obscure brand and I threw out those manuals, geez, probably in the early 90s. Just didn't think I'd need them. Hindsight, right?
Okay, test point in a different location. I'm on one of the emitter resistors. This happens to be the left channel, the one that's actually working. So I'm just going to go ahead and tune this to an AM station with nothing there so I can just get static. And watch when I increase the volume. I'm seeing 140, 150 millivolts of audio, which is what's actually going to the speaker right there. So I'm going to move the test point over to the right channel, the one that we're having problems with. Turn the balance all the way to the right and watch what happens when I increase the volume on this one. It's showing audio output. Why am I not getting sound? And it's not a speaker switch issue. Or is it? So I'm turning the volume back down, pull the probe off here and just connect it to the speaker terminal itself and increase the volume and I get nothing. I heard the speaker relay close. So if I power this back off, then power it on. Let me move my microphone for you. And listen to the speaker relay. You definitely hear a click when it closes. Is it just the relay? It tells me the power amplifier is working just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this back to the emitter resistor. And I'm just going to go to DC volts and see if we have a DC offset. And no, we do not. So let's check both sides of the emitter resistor. They give you two test points here. No DC offset there. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect this to the speaker right here. And we'll turn up the volume and see if we get sound on the right channel. And yes, we do. So there's the left channel, and there's the right channel. That's great news. That means the power amplifier is working perfectly fine. We don't have a blown channel or a blown preamp or something like that down here. It's getting from the emitter resistor, which is basically the last point in the amplification stage. Next, it should go through the relay and then out to the speaker terminals. So next... Let's go ahead and pop the bottom on this thing and measure these same voltages at the speaker relay contacts and see what they have to say. Okay, here is the power amplifier board. I'm in millivolts AC once again, and it's very sensitive. It's just picking up any stray noise whatsoever. So here is the right channel, and this is the left channel. So let's power this thing on, volume down. Speaker relay did click. We'll do the same test once again. Balance in the center. Measuring on the emitter resistors right here. That one's working. And that one's working. So I'm going to put this all the way to the bad channel. Which is going to be the right channel right here. And so I've got 160 millivolts of audio on there. This is the speaker relay contacts right here. So we'll follow this in right here and we get audio there. This is the output of the speaker relay. And I do have audio there and it goes through a fuse. And I checked that fuse. I've got audio there and nothing there. What is going on with this thing? Is it's a bad connection on the freaking fuse. Did you see that? Unbelievable. Okay, let's pop the fuse out and retension it. And then this thing should be good. Okay, well, there are the two fuses for the speaker outputs. They're both four amp fuses, and it does look like one's been replaced. It has a different filament structure than this one has, but I just want to move them back and forth and see if there's any play and no I don't see anything and that's the right channel that's the one that was having problems interesting maybe a bad fuse wouldn't that be something well let's see how much power it takes to lift this up well pretty easy yeah I just don't know
Well, it's kind of tough to see, but this is the right channel and this is the one that was having the problem. This thing is just really oxidized. Wonder if I can put some scratches in it. Oh yeah, look how oxidized that is. I bet you that's the whole problem. It just needs to be cleaned. Uh, let me see. I'm going to try to get like a little Dremel tip down in there and polish it, maybe. We'll see how that goes. Well, after scraping and scraping, I'm still not happy with the results. So I was going to try to save this customer a couple of dollars, but unfortunately, we're going to have to install some new fuse holders. So I do have some brand spanking fuse holders. They might be a little bit bright right there, but we'll go ahead and pop those in. They're nice silver plated for very good conductivity. And then this thing should be good. Okay, I'm gonna add some fresh solder to help melt the old solder. It's been on there for like 40 plus years. Okay, two new fuse holders and two new four amp fuses. I couldn't read the value on one because it was so corroded and the other one was a five amp. So went ahead and replaced both of them with good brand new four amp fuses. Let's power this thing on. Speaker relay click. There's the right channel. There's the left channel working perfect. And I don't even think I need to clean the controls on this thing. They all sound great. None of them are distorted. None of them have any crackles whatsoever. Even the switches on this thing are in excellent condition. Well, I think that's going to be it. Both channels working perfectly now. There's the right channel. There's the left channel. They both sound good. I see someone has done some work to this unit in the past because if you look right here, that capacitor is not original and that capacitor is not original either. So someone's done a bit of recapping, but it sounds perfect. I don't think this customer wants to invest a lot of money and have the whole thing completely recapped. I don't see any deficiencies in base or treble on either channel, which leads me to believe the capacitors are in pretty good shape. So I'm just going to send this one back as is. I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the MCS 3248. Just a simple corroded fuse holder was all that was holding this thing back. Other than that, this thing is in mint condition. Well, except for all the dirt and corrosion and stuff, but nevertheless, working great right now. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern, good or bad, down below. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It does definitely help YouTube algorithm think that I'm doing a great job, and I certainly hope I am doing a great job. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job, and I do these repairs in my spare time. If you try to contact me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, please be aware it might be weeks or even months before I respond. I rarely check those messages. Please, if you want to contact me, use the Gmail address only. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.